afternoon, Nigerians. You are welcome to another edition of Editor's Forum on Galaxy Television. This beautiful rainy afternoon in the city of Lagos. Um, I skipped the rain uh, just by a minute or by a minute. And I hope uh, you are safe wherever you are and you're not beaten by the rain too. And if you are, well, I hope you get dry as soon as possible. But definitely on the show, you will be having a very great time. So I know that will help you to, you know, warm up from the cool of um, the weather. Uh, I am Layo Shubo for Lauren Shaw, and I welcome you once again. It's definitely been another week of lots of activities in Nigeria and even on the international scene. Uh, starting with Monday, we saw the Federal Relative Council approving a supplementary budget of 2.176 trillion naira for the funding of critical sectors of the Nigerian economy, and that was sent to the 10th National Assembly. Also, uh, on Monday, was when the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, gave his first reaction to the Supreme Court's verdict, which affirmed um, the election of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And he was saying that the judgment of the Apex Court and the presidential you know, tribunal have great implications for the future of Nigerians, including the erosion of trust in the electoral system. However, PDP governors say, you know what, we are okay with the verdict of the Supreme Court. We think this is a very great one for Nigeria. And to me, it's to me like the, you know, the governors are probably selling out their candidates or whatsoever it is on the show. We will just give quick reactions to that. And then still on Monday, yes, River State was, um, House of Assembly was on fire. And let's say we can still say the state was on fire given the impeachment allegations and everything that had to do with Governor Sinalai in Fubara. That will be our main focus of discussion on the program today. And so at this point, let me introduce my guest. Um, I have in the house, Mr. Sunday Odibashi, uh, editor, National Daily Newspaper. He's one of our very, very constant guests. Thank you so much yes. for being here once yes. again. All right, and I also have with me Dr. Felix or Lorenta. He's a public affairs analyst and protection professional. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Thank you. It's Thank so you good to have me. you. It's actually his first time on the editor's forum, and I hope you'll be having a very great time with us. Thank you. Okay, so I mentioned we'll be having uh, quick reactions to a few things that happened. You know, there are a lot of things that happened during the week, and just a little of it. Um, talking about um, on Wednesday, uh, or yeah, since we'll be looking at um, River State's issue as a whole, let's start with the Nigeria Labour Congress chairman or national president that was, you know, brutalized, allegedly brutalized in Imo State when he visited the state for, you know, planned protest. Now, um, the NLC, Joe Ajero, are alleging that the police, the security agencies in the state brutalized him, took him to an unknown place, blindfolded him, and, you know, assaulted him, which led him to the hospital. While the Imo State um, Commissioner and the police spokesperson have come out to say, you know what, that was not what happened. He was taken into protective custody. Now, all of this, who is to blame? Who, who, do we, who do we pass it to? Because it is going here, going there. And then, would you say the timing of that protest anyway, the planned protest, is it, is it right? Given the fact that it's just a few days to election. election in the States, I'll start with you, Dr. Londa. Thank you. Uh, I've listened to both sides. Mm. Um, uh, I like uh, where you ended up is where I'm going to start. Is it, it's not very strategic for him to be in that state at that time. Because the governor, at least the governor said he's a national uh, labor leader, is getting involved in the local politics of the state, and he's from that state. So maybe it's not very, but that does not justify his, as the assault on his person. I think uh, as the national leader, it doesn't give us a, a good uh, image as a country for our lab, number one labor leader in the country to be so treated. That shows the respect we have for our. Yeah, fairly human being. So, having said that, uh, so there's no excuse he should have been protected or they should have prevented him from joining the rally. There's, 
and yeah, I thought ways. it started the way. Okay, there were yeah. planning. There are civil ways, ways of restraining him because yeah. he's an unarmed, un, un, unarmed uh, person, and uh, it's just him. Okay, he might be the chairman of the labor or the president of the labor leader or labor movement, but there are ways it could be managed better than what we saw. That's what I would say. Okay, so moving on to the supplementary budgets, that will be the second thing we'll be given a quick reaction to. Um, and the most controversial one, the presidential yacht. According to the presidency, it doesn't belong to the president, or it, it's the Navy's, but a presidential yacht. And um, said that that request had been on ground before now, before now yeah. not just in this bill. But the point I'll be bringing out here is the chief whip of um, the National Assembly, that's uh, the Senate rather, Anil Dume, on Friday in an interview was saying the five billion yacht had been brought, delivered into Nigeria, even before the supplementary bill was brought to the 10th Assembly before it was made public, but awaiting payment. That is why. Now, the House Committee Chairman on Appropriation was eventually came out to tell Nigerians that that amount, that five billion naira had been, that presidential yacht had been yanked off the budget and added to the student's loan. These are two contradicting statements. Is there is there something that the National Assembly is not telling us, or the federal government as a whole, are they, are they playing on our intelligence, or what do you think? Uh, perhaps the government is not yet settled. Mm. So that's a sign of confusion. When you have uh, one National Assembly telling you two different things on one, on one particular issue, mm -hmm. it means the disorganization. And then the first is, what does the president need to match for? But how often does he move that water? You know, because there's no excuse, they are trying to say, not to be no. The presidential field belongs to the Nigeria Air Force. Where is the president that uses the fleet? Exactly what I said. So because if there, is, if there is any reason that the Navy needs a yacht, they cannot. You need worship. You don't need 45. Mm -hmm. No, they are not just for holidays. You know, it's for, for Wall Street movement. So what, what, you need, what does the president need it for? And you are saying that the, the country is you no know, no revenue, the country is hard, hard, there's hard everywhere. So why do you waste that kind of funds? At this particular time. So you see the government is still not uh, properly organized. Yes. If, if the same government can tell you two stories or one particular issue, it means the government is not properly organized. And then looking at the issue of the SUVs that we had the previous it's, week it's, yeah, Lonica, coming Lonica, into Lonica. presidential yacht yeah. and even vehicle for the first lady. Yeah, yeah. While my, while the lawmakers themselves are they are telling us to, you know, um, purchase made in Nigeria goods. But we see it's them. Not about, you know, purchasing many Nigerian goods. Mm. It's about the government telling that not have enough resources to carry out government activities. Okay, but come for that reason, they say, okay, we are stopping, we are putting something to our head, so we get more funds. Mm. And you, have, you don't have more, you don't have funds to perform government responsibilities, you have fun to bring comfort to the elite. Mm -hmm. So, I think the Nigerian government is taking Nigerian citizens for granted. Mm -hmm. Let's be very honest on these circumstances. And, and, and then as the uh, week was winding off, we had also another report of repatriation of, you know, some money from Apache loot. And, and coming at this time that Nigeria, you know, we are in a lot of debt. We, we don't even have money to fund our own projects. And that, 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 what that brought to my mind is, okay, during the last administration, there were a lot of repatriation about two or three, four times. Yeah. Those monies, were they accounted for? Or is it that we didn't get to know them? Or and now this will be coming in. Do you do you think uh, with all of this that we have at hand, do you think the government will really manage it? Or do we tell wherever it's coming from that they should hold it yet? No, we need all the money that we can get, and it's our money. Mm. Anyway. So uh, we we'll better manage it by ourselves than asking them to hold it. But I think the government need to show more sensitivity to the hardship that is economy, the life of our people. And so, but over time, what we have seen is that the government is detached from the everyday reality of our cities. Mm -hmm. So it's not just this government, it has always been every government. They think they prioritize their own comfort, their own safety, uh, above every other thing. And it should not be so, because when you are telling, when the president is saying, I feel your pain, I don't know what you are going through, we want it demonstrated in practical reality. 
by not saying, okay, you see the vehicle that we have now, where are they driving those vehicles to? We see them flying on our hand. Where they cannot go with vehicle, they go with shoppers. And then because our roads are bad. Our roads are bad. So, them. so is it just moving around Abuja? I don't expect the president going from Abuja to any state and he will not fly. Mm. <laughs> if you cannot fly the presidential jet, we fly the Air Force uh, helicopters and all of that. So where are they driving these cars to? So if he's coming to Lagos, there's another car waiting for him in Lagos. So why not think of, let's use this money judiciously, you know, you want to pay palliative to workers for three months, why not let's say extend it beyond three, and all of that. So we see a practical demonstration from the government that they are they really feel our pain. As it as it sounds, I don't think so. Just mere you know talking. Even this palliative it. you talked about, yeah. so we, we, we should we are not going into that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You see you see how irrational and lawmakers are. Telling because the roads are bad. That is why they move for the ground of time they went for. Do you, do you understand? Now what are they there for? It's not to make laws for good government. Mm -hmm. Is that a law that will make more Nigeria forward? Okay, without with those cars, vehicles, you know, fix the roads. Now, the cost, so I, 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 I had someone say that one of those just cost 150 million. 160. Yes. You want 60? Yes. Now, one check. How much does it cost to turn one kilometer of road? Mm. Then multiply by 439 lawmakers. Mm. Yes. 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 You need some of those cars. When you multiply it, like I know how many billions there are, you can think of it. It's actually going to run into three years. Okay, yeah, it will run into three months. Yes. The one car, one of those vehicles could take at least 10, 10 kilometers. Mm. And we to multiply on off road, you know, to town. I'm just, that's a conservative estimate. Now, why would not put it into, put it on the head of each of the public cars? So you can now know how many kilometers that can roads that can come in Nigeria that are useful to all Nigerians and not just the lawmakers. Mm. I think the lawmakers are irrational and but I am also not too going to too hard on them because Nigerians are the ones who make the choice. Because when the election comes, they don't vote the Nigerians. Mm. So they are getting what they ask for. Mm. Nigerians are getting what they ask for. The lawmakers may not be right. They may be very irrational, but I think Nigerians is what they made for them. But let's put this in the in a clear perspective. Okay. Every National Assembly, this is the 10th Assembly, yes. the volumes we buy in cash. It's just that because of the hardship that we have now, is where we are paying attention. Every National Assembly from number the first assembly, we are now in the 10th yeah. Assembly. La, nine assembly they also bought cars. So it has only been a tradition. And those cars they will know it's them for operational vehicle. They're probably going to keep them because those of our, those of them are ranking senators in the House of Rep or Senate, uh, Senator, uh, Senate, uh, Senate mm. you can imagine the number of cars they will have had over the, over the years. Mm. Because if somebody is in the 9th Assembly and a new car was bought for him, now he's in the 10th Assembly, he's going to benefit from this new car. One of the, one of the senators was saying, you know, he has even more than, more than, than of this car already. Cars. So because he's a ranking member of the Assembly, he will have been getting this car every uh, Assembly. So so what do, we, what do they do with those cars? And now we know that we don't have money to fix the roads, and we need money to fix the Why not buy Nigerian used cars, Nigerian made cars? Okay? Like we see the commissioner in Lagos driving. I see them driving made Nigerian cars. Is it too much? 40 million? That would be okay for you to do operational work. You are making laws for Nigeria. You are not making laws for Japan where these vehicles are coming from. Even, even 40 million naira is still much. I mean, if you, if you, if you share one, one million naira to 40 people or households in Nigeria, that, they will have said about 120 million. That's yeah, a good yeah, number. Instead of 160 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you very much for um, that quick reaction. We go on a break now to take a report that will lead us to the discussion of the day. And when we return, we'll delve into the conversation. Just stay with us. Heard that greed has been the main issue where a godfather is at loggerheads with his godson, as it has happened in states like Lagos, Anambra, Edo, Imo, and most recently River State. However, stressing that the only way to avert godfatherism in our climb is to deepen democracy, strengthen our institutions, and have political conscious citizens, thereby situating godfathers two advisory roles that um, 
uh, if you had been in position of governorship or any other political appointment, your experience should help those who are coming behind you to do better. That is that should be the thing. No question of you dictating and directing the new person. Interestingly, what we even make the system even more difficult for Godfathers is when the people are enlightened, politically enlightened I mean, if the people know their rights, for instance, and they uh, stand for their rights, come out at elections to vote and with technologies like the beavers I'm talking about, I talked about, and then you have credible institutions like INEC or like the judiciary, then you are going somewhere. While the experts say it may not be applicable to everyone as it is today in some states, godfathers should be offering advices and experience to those in positions of authority and not command. They added that money and power have necessitated bickering with godsons, which often affects governance in the states. Applicable all over. And some younger politicians have been gaining from us. Okay. And we don't usually go out and talk about being godfathers and so forth. But um, in other places, uh, they believe that one who is uh, in my position should be directing on what should be done. That is where we get it wrong. It is not expected to be that. It's money and power. They want to have it all. And they must have it. Because the person that has money thinks he can control everybody else or everything else. So it's money and power. If you had followed the, the districts of beavers, it, it would have broadened using technology to have deepened democracy. An associate professor, however, stated that having credible institutions like INEC to conduct elections with improved technology in real time will reduce the influence of godfathers during elections.